There I healed and welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet. The last time we beat uh, Director Clavel because he was impostering as Cassiopeia. But uh, yeah, he wasn't, obviously. Um, so now we need to find the real Cassiopeia. Or, you know, Penny. I'm pretty sure it's Penny. But I thought, why not do some classes first? And apparently we got the third for Mall. Hmm, interesting. So, biology with Mr. Shuck. Yes, please. Let us see what biology has to teach us. If anything. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. I seem to be able to teach you all about the importance of eggs in our last class together. Ah, on that note, is everyone using the Pokedex? It registers Pokemon born from eggs as well as those encountered via other methods. So don't you worry about that. And uh, <laughs> just so you know, I'm the one who developed the Pokedex app. It was way before I started teaching here at the academy though. Back then, I was a researcher. In fact, Director Clow wasn't working in education at the time either. He was researching alongside me at the same facility. We got to research Pokemon together day in, day out. Those sure were fun times. I could yell that all the time though. <laughs> Wait a second. How did I get into, onto this? Pretty sure we'll talk about the Pokedex. Uh, anyway, today I'd like to teach you about catching Pokemon. As you all know, a great way to catch a Pokemon more easily is to first lower its HP. But there's another way to up your chances of a successful catch. Can you guess what it is? Give it a berry, inflict the status condition, prove you're stronger than the Pokemon. <laughs> it worked for Wally. -E. Now inflict the status condition. Wow, that's great, Kaylee. Great job. The correct technique for, poker, for making Pokemon easier to catch is to inflict them with a status condition. Sleep is an especially effective status condition. It makes Pokemon drastically easier to catch. If you have a Pokemon that can use moves that put opponents to sleep like sleep powder or hypnosis, filling up your Pokedex will be a cinch. There are other ways to improve your catch rate as well, like using Pokeballs specifically designed to be effective against certain Pokemon. Eating food that gives you catching power works too, or sneaking, sneaking up on Pokemon from behind to catch them by surprise when you start a battle. If you're having trouble, you may want to make the rounds to the gyms to get gym badges. Earning gym badges will make it easier to catch Pokemon of higher and higher levels. Please do show me your Pokedexes once they start to fill up. Another day, another enjoyable class. Oh yeah, don't forget, our next class will be a test. Oh, we're gonna be tested. Bum bum bum. Ooh, the midterm. Shall we take the midterm? Let's go. Let's take our midterm test then. See what's up. Hello, hello everyone. Today is our midterm exam. It sure feels good to fill in all those empty spaces of the answer sheet, doesn't it? Take your time and contemplate each question carefully. But use to let a Pokemon out of its Pokeball so that it can walk with you. That is the our button. Our button. Right? Or is it set our? Uh oh. -oh. Combine one letter and one number below to correctly say when and where eggs are found. 
during picnics? Oh! Shh, nibbit! I'm going to fail this one! Which of the following is an effective way to warm up eggs? Walking around. Or will not make. Um, giving them a berry. Make easier to catch Pokemon of higher and higher levels. Gym badges. I don't like the Pokedex. Is it easy to use? I'd be happy to hear your honest opinion. Uh, it's alright. It's alright. Right run, time's up. I hope you all enjoy attacking those questions. The last question was just something that I'm personally curious about. Don't tell the director about it, okay? I read these right away. I hope you all did too. to see how you did. Well, I failed one. Should have been one B. It's great to taste to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's take a look at the results. I get three questions great to pass the midterms exams and four questions great to pass the final exams. Let's see how it is in the biology test. Three out of... Three out of five? Wait. Oh, the first one. Okay, it was said. Ah, then. Shh, nib it. Mr. Shark asked us to give this award to any student who passed the exam. Five small experience candies. Woo! Yeah, so those can just mumble, mumble. More biology. I'm guessing this and the next episode will be all about school life, eh? I like biology with Mr. Shack, yes? Let's see. Hello, hello. I hope everyone's ready to learn some new things today. You all did really great on the midterm exam. Thanks for answering my little question of, at the end, too. I'll be sure to keep your responses in mind. Alright, we're now heading into the last half of our classes together. It's time for our knowledge to evolve and grow, just like our Pokemon. Evolution, yep, ha ha ha. Evolution. Today we're going to learn about the fastness of phenomenon of Pokemon evolution. As your Pokemon battle and level up, they learn stronger moves and get stronger. And for some Pokemon, once they've leveled up enough, their appearances changes and their stats increase sometimes by a lot. That's Pokemon evolution. Pokemon becomes very strong when they evolve, making them trusty partners in battle. But some people prefer to keep their Pokemon in their adorable pre-evolved states. To do this, you just need to remember a certain button when your Pokemon begins to evolve. Say with me, if you already know, to cancel, cancel evolution, press the B button. C button? What C button? That's right everyone, B for best answer. The button you want when you need to stop a Pokemon from evolving is the B button. If you press this button soon after a Pokemon begins to evolve, you can stop it from changing. You can also let the Pokemon hold an item known as an Everstone to keep it from evolving. And keep in mind that the requirements for evolution differ from Pokemon to Pokemon. Some may evolve by having a certain item such as a Firestone or Thunderstone used on them. Others may have to learn a specific move or defeat a specific Pokemon in battle to evolve. The way Primeape evolves into an Annihilate is especially strange. You see, there's a certain move that... Whoops! Sorry, looks like we've run out of time. I guess we'll have to end the class here today. Thank you all for your attention. I see. So good and just to say that it needs to use Rage Fist 20 times before it can evolve. Ugh. Let's go for number 5, Biology. See what happens. Also, the B button is quite handy, yes, but it doesn't work if you give an item to evolve it, of course. Hello, hello, I hope you to learn some new things today. But before we get going, do all, you all remember the final question from our midterm exam? Well, Director Clarell found out about it somehow, and I got yelled that. Whoops. Apparently, he could tell I was hiding something just by looking at me. 
He must have noticed all the color flush right out of my face. Haha. <laughs> Speaking of color, today I'd like to teach you all about colors as they pertain to Pokemon. Some Pokemon have slightly different coloration or patterning on their bodies based on their gender or individual differences. In very rare cases, a Pokemon may have wildly different coloration compared to those to others of the same species. We call these specimens shiny Pokemon. It is quite rare to come to cross paths with one. Does anyone, where, does anyone here know what the likelihood of finding a shiny Pokemon is? One in four thousand. Once upon a time, it was one in eight thousand and something. Wow, that's right, you may have the markings of a Pokemon professor, Kaylee. Shiny Pokemon appear at a rate of 1 in 4,000. Isn't that amazing? The probability of encountering one in the wild is the same as hatching one from an egg, too. Eggs from a pair of Pokemon raised around different languages are a special case. There is a higher than average chance that a shiny Pokemon will hatch from these eggs, but we haven't been able to figure out why that is just yet. I've also heard rumors of a charm that increases your likelihood of sh finding shiny Pokemon when you have it in your bag. Can you believe that? This claim can't be scientifically verified, but it sure would be fun if it were true. Whoops, the bell. That's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Mm-hmm. So, are we going to be taking still no exam? Mamma mia. There might actually be three episodes with classes. Hello, hello, how are everyone's ready to learn some new things? Next time we meet, we'll have our final exam. That means today is our last actual class. And the topic for this last class will be Pokemon Forms. You can just think of forms as the shapes of or appearances that Pokemon have. There's also a phenomenon called a form change, where Pokemon's appearance changes under certain conditions. Cyclists are, for example, which we regularly ride on as the transportation here in Paldea has three forms. First is its basic form, where it walks on all four legs. Second is its battle form, where it stands on its hind legs to engage in battle. Finally, there is its ride form, where it inflates its throat sack and its tail so we can ride on its back. Though we can use something you're all carrying with you now as an even better example. Yep, I'm talking about your phone. Some smartphones are inhabited by a certain Pokemon. Does anyone know the Pokemon I'm referring to? Heracross? <laughs> Rodum. You're a regular expert on Pokemon and technology, aren't you, Kate? The Pokemon inside your smartphone is Rotom, and it does all sorts of things to help you out. The Rotom inside a Rotom phone is special, so it doesn't try to enter other electronics. An ordinary Rotom, however, can change form from by entering washing machines, microwave ovens, and other electronic appliances. Rotom is a bit of exception though. Many Pokemon that change form do so simply by holding an item or by having one used on them. Oricorio, for example, has four different forms. It can change between when given certain nectars. Pokemon may even change type or learn different moves when they change form. Form changes are different from evolution in that the Pokemon can return to its original form. And unlike shiny Pokemon, which can't change the special coloration, the same individual Pokemon can go back and forth between its forms. There's a lot to dig into with this form change phenomenon, as you can see. We can all learn something from Pokemon here, don't you think? Bit of a stretch, but... I'd be happy to see you all enjoy your time at the Academy to the fullest and change form into a new version of yourselves. Or something like that anyway. Oh, I almost forgot. Regional forms, which vary, vary based on what region a Pokemon came from, don't change like other forms. They are an innate... Oops, heh, <laughs> there's the bell. I guess I was scatterbrained. Mr. Shack, right up to the very end, huh? I had a great time teaching all of you. I hope you'll do your best on the final exam. 
exam time then. And we need to get four questions right. Hopefully I won't screw up too much. The final. Let's see. Hello, hello everybody. Today is our final exam. It will cover everything I've taught you so far, but I'm sure you all will do just fine. Take your time and contemplate each question carefully. How many of the following four methods make it easier to catch a Pokemon? Inflicting paralysis, check. Using a poker toy, nope. Feeding in a berry, nope. Surprising from behind, yes. So, two. True or false, you can get new Pokemon only by catching them yourself or trading with other trainers. False. Because you can also hatch eggs. If a Pokemon is holding an Everstone, Will using an item that induces evolution, such as a Firestone, cause it to evolve? Ooh. I don't actually know. Before, because if you use a stone, you use it willingly. So if the Pokemon is holding an Everstone, Will it evolve then? Ha! Huh. I'm... Oh, I'm going with no, it won't. We'll see if it's correct or not. What is the probability of running into a shiny Pokemon? One in four thousand. True or false? Pokemon known as Ori Koryo has three forms. False. It has four, maybe even five. It has yellow, pink, red, purple. Does it only have four? Or is there a form I can't think of? Eh, whatever. It's false anyway. This question won't affect your grade. Do you have anything you would like to say about my class? I'm still getting used to this teaching thing, but I sure had fun as your teacher. Um, keep teaching. You can do it. Okay, time's up. Whether you like it or not, I hope everyone enjoyed tackling those questions. Hey, I snuck in a little bonus question there. Right at the end again. Shh! Our little secret. Don't tell the director. I'll grade these right away. I hope you're all looking forward to seeing how you did. I'm pretty sure it's it's four out of five. Maybe five out of five. Five out of five. Okay. So that answers my question that you can't use a stone to evolve something that holds an everstone. Good to know. That's a passing score. Congrats. What do you mean? It's a perfect score. And five experience candies in. Hmm. And that was biology. Oh boy. Math time with miss time. Oh yeah, speaking of miss time. Do you think Miss Time and uh, Jimmy the Rhyme are siblings? They could be. Hello everyone! Let's have a fun class today. Tell me, do you all enjoy fortune telling horoscopes and the like? I think it feels great to read your horoscope and see that it says good luck is coming your way. So today I'd like to teach you all math while focusing on the topic of luck. Perhaps you have all you have seen the following phrase crop up during Pokemon battles before. A critical hit. When a 
Pokemon's attack lands as a critical hit. The damage it deals is increased by half. In other words, it does one and a half times as much damage as it normally would. It is truly luck that determines whether your Pokemon lands a critical hit or has one landed on it. This can cause a great upset in battle. Does anyone know what percent chance a Pokemon has of landing a critical hit? Ooh. It's not a 1%. Well, percent seems... Hmm... This might be one of those I don't get right. Because I'm not actually sure. If it was a 12%... 12 and 100 hits, that's... Uh, let's see... About one in nine. While a four percent would be twenty twenty five. One in f one in twenty five. Uh. So is it a 1 in 25 or is it 1 in about 9%? 1 in 9, 1 in 9, so 1 in 9, once every 9, 10 moves would be a critical hit. Or is it 1 in every 25? That seems high. I'm going with the 4%. This is correct. Well done, Kaylee. The chance of landing a critical hit is said to be 1 in 24. Which figures to roughly 4.17%. Four in hundred. If you should make the four two hundred, would times it by twenty-five. Wait, what? Anyway, the odds are more favorable for certain moves. Oh, why moves such as Stone Edge and Shadow Claw have about a twelve percent chance? You can also use a move called Focus Energy, or an item known as a Dire Hit. Both raise the critical hit ratio by two stages. That's a 50% chance to land a critical hit. It feels great to land a critical hit, but perhaps... Not as... not so great to be struck by one. There's a surprising amount of mathematical probability hidden in Pokemon battles, you know. If you're able to do the calculations that'll swing luck in your favor, it may open the door for more strategic choices for your for you to do in battle. Oh. oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. Next class will be a mid fun midterm exam. I hope you'll be looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. You don't say. Let's do the math midterm then. All right, everyone, it's time to begin our midterm exam. I'm sure the fun experiences you all had in my class will serve you well as your answer. How much damage does Water Gun do when it hits a fire type? Double damage. 
how much damage does Racial Leaf do when it hits a Fire Town? Half damage. If you spend 2000 on as many $200 Pokeballs as possible, how many would you get? 11. What percent chance does a Pokemon usually have to land a critical hit? About a 4%. How much damage does a move deal when it lands a critical hit? One and a half times as much. Alright everyone, time is up. Put your hands on your laps now! You were all concentrating so hard, I can't wait to see how you did. Do go and ask for your scores at the front desk and then take a nice break. Nope, no breaks. We're all speed, baby. Good to say, it says, let's take a look. Let's get three questions for an exam. We did five over the five. That's passing score, congratulations. Miss Time asked you to give this reward. Experience Candies S. Doing our best. Math number four. Miss Time. Oh yes, please. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Well done on the midterm exam. Some of you are in perfect scores and others seems to have a bit of trouble, but I can tell that you all tried your best. I'm quite pleased to say that every last one of you passed. I can only assume that this means you have all come to love numbers. Well, <coughs> I don't know about that, but uh, stay sharp and try your best for the rest of my classes too. Speaking of staying sharp, do you know how that word applies to Pokemon battles? That's right, it has to do with stat boosts. A Pokemon's stats can rise and fall throughout the course of battle, correct? For example, if a Pokemon uses the move Work Up, its attack and special attack stats will rise by one stage each. And as you know, each time a Pokemon's attack or special attack rises by one stage, moves affected by that stat will deal 50% more damage. If that same Pokemon from our previous example were to use Work Up again, both its attack and special attack will have risen by two stages total. This results in a 100% increase to damage dealt, making it more moves twice as strong. Sword Stance, on the other hand, boosts attack by two stages at once, allowing the Pokémon to deal double damage after just a single use. Using Sword Stance twice would boost the Pokémon's attack stat by four stages. How much more damage, then, would this Pokémon deal? Um, Triple damage? Oh, that's great! You answer this difficult question with ease, Kaylee. Each stage of the Pokémon's attack or special attack that is raised increases its attack by 50%. So being raised four stages will result in a 4 times 50% or 200% increase. The base damage of a move is 100%, so adding 200% to that gives us a 300%. In other words, the next move the Pokémon uses will deal triple damage. Type matchups, critical hit damage, and other factors all play into these calculations as well. So even a small boost must be taken seriously. By the way, if a stat simply rose, that means it had gone up by one stage. If it rose sharply, that's two stages. If it rose drastically, that's three stages. Just so you know, the X attack and special X attack items, which can only be used in battle, can be used to sharply boost those respective stats. Oh my, is that the bell? I suppose that's all for now. What a shame. Today's lesson was a little difficult, so be sure to review what you've learned in order to stay sharp. I'll see you all next class. Right. Right. So two more classes, and then we have the final. <clears throat> oh yeah, we have. Hello everyone! Let's have a fun class today. 
Did you make sure to review last class's material in order to stay sharp? I know it was a little difficult with all the talk of multiplication and percentages and the like, but today we'll be talking about percentages again to learn about probability. That may sound like we're going to have another difficult class, but that you know that all of you already deal with probability on a regular basis. Pokemon moves generally have a probability called accuracy, which determines the probability that they will hit. The accuracy of a tackle is 100 or 100 percent. So if you were to use the tackle 100 times, you would expect it to hit all 100 times. The move Hypnosis, which puts opponents to sleep, has an accuracy of 60 or 60 percent. That means you could expect it to hit 60 times in 100 uses. To put that another way, out of 100 uses, you would expect to miss 40 times. Many of the truly powerful moves often tend to have lower accuracy. So, when you're deciding whether to go slow and steady with moves that are sure to hit, or hard and fast with stronger but less accurate moves, you're already studying probability. Let me see here. Perhaps Surf and Hydropod would be good examples for this discussion. Surf has a power of 90, its accuracy is 100, meaning you can expect it to hit every time. Hydropump's accuracy is only 80, but when it hits, its power is 110! So between Surf and Hydropump, which move would you want to use yourselves? Um. Personally, I'd always go with Surf. One, it has more power points. Uh, two more Pokemon can learn it, uh, and also 80% that one in five chance of missing. Um, it's 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 a mm, little bit iffy, but uh, if you could use a accuracy boosting move or or having a what's it called white white lens is that the accuracy boosting one? then Hydro Pump would have a higher accuracy. So, it depends on the situation. Oh my, I see you're always considering various possibilities, Kaylee. I may have made it sound like there was a correct answer here, but there's not. You're free to use any move you wish. Factors like PP or number of targets hit may make some moves more suited to certain situations. However, trading accuracy for power or vice versa it's purely a matter of preference. This Surf vs. Hydropump debate has been ongoing for quite some time. Personally, I'm more invested in debating the Rock-type moves Rock Slide and Stone Age. Let me tell you, I could get really worked up talking about those moves, but... Oh my, there's the bell. What a shame. Next class will be the last of our time together, so show up 100% ready to go. Quite, quite. So, what are we going to learn in the last class? Oh, hello, Ginga. Does that mean it's night time? I believe it might mean that it's night time. <laughs> hello, everyone. I hope we can have, one, have fun once again today for our last class together. Last time we learned about probability using more accuracy as an example. Probability is quite an interesting subject. Did you know that in a class with 40 students, there is a 90% chance that two of them will have the same birthday? This is true, even despite the fact that there are over 300 days each year. Isn't that remarkable? But let's move on to today's subject, to today's topic, before we get swept along with probability again. I've been teaching you all how to calculate damage in this class using symbols like type matchups, critical hits, stat boosts, and the like. All of these variables are multiplied together to calculate damage dealt to an opponent. However, did you know that there is an even simpler way to increase the damage of your Pokémon's moves? All you have to do is have your Pokémon use a move it shares a type with. If a Rock-type Pokémon uses a Rock-type move, Stone Edge the move space power of 100 is multiplied by 1.5 to become 150. Ground and rock may seem like similar types, but if a rock ground type Pokemon uses Stone Edge, 
the moves, power will remain 100. Super effective moves and critical hits also add multipliers on to this little number increase, so it most certainly must not be taken lightly. Let me ask you a question to see if you understand what I'm talking about. Say you have a move with a power of 100. If a Pokemon that shares a type of this move uses it and hits an opponent that is weak to the, that type, what happens to that move's power? It becomes 300. You did that calculation all in your head. Well done, Kane. First, you see a move that shares a type of this use and multiplies the base move power by, by, of 100 by 1.5, making the power 150. The fact that the Pokemon opponent is weak to the move type then doubles that power from 150 to 300. The original power of the move ends up being tripled. Isn't that amazing? What's more, if a Pokemon terrestrialized and the terror type matches one of its original types, then the bonus it gets for using a move of that type increases from 1.5 to 2. Of course, being able to use a lot of moves with different types is great as well. That's one way you can surprise your opponent. In the end, your own innate characteristics are what will really let you shine the most. Bear in mind that this is true for both humans and Pokémon. It sure would make me happy if you could take those words to heart. But I suppose I should really have shared this basic advice right from our first lesson. My apologies. And just like that, class is over. The last of our time together flew by in a blink of an eye. It was so much fun to be able to teach you all eager students about numbers. Next class will be a fun, uh, will be our fun final exam. Be sure to read the materials well in preparation. Oh, you don't say, do you, lassie? Oops, wrong button. I would like to take the math final. Alright everyone, it's time to begin our final exam! I'm sure the fun experiences you all had in my class will serve you well as you answer. How many Great Balls could you purchase? with 3,000 if each one costs 600. I could buy 5 because I do not buy 10 so there is not as a secret hidden one. So I would buy 5. If a water type move with the power of 100 and a critical hit on a grass type Pokemon, what will the move's power be? So. The 100 power becomes 150 because of the critical hit, then half to 75. Under moral conditions, what percent chance does Stone Edge have to land a critical hit? Stone Edge is one of the type moves that has an increased percentage to crit, so a 12% chance. If a Pokemon uses Sword Dance twice to boost its attack by four stages, how much damage will its physical moves then do? They will do triple damage. If a Rock-type Pokemon whose Terror type is Rock-typed, rock, if Rock terrestrializes, what will the power of its Rock-type moves be multiplied by? By two. We just heard this. All right, everyone, time is up. Put your hands on your laps now. This test was the culmination of all I taught you, and I'm sure you all did just fine. Do go and ask for your scores at the front desk, and then take a nice break. So, did I get 4 out of 5, at least? Or have I been a dum-dum in some way? Let's see. 5 out of 5. Woo! Perfect score. And five experience candies in. So then, let's see now. We have a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. Five classes where we need to do class number three, the midterm, 
number four, number five, number six, and then the final. I honestly don't know if I should make that a s I'm going to make it a separate video, nonetheless. But I'm thinking of linking it in this video and, and making it unlisted, not a part of the, the playlist, the Let's Play playlist. So if you want to check out all the classes, you, you can check in the description for, for this um, for this bonus video. Because honestly, that's just too much time to take for you to watch. So, look in the description for, for the, uh, the class. Um, yeah, for the classes. Um, and uh, the next time, I think we will be, well, fighting Cassiopeia. So thank you so very much for watching. Maybe enjoying it. I don't know. Seemed a bit, you know, classes ain't always that exciting. And until next time, see. Ah, that voice.